Okay, what the fuck is up? Uh, welcome back. My name is Noah. Today's video, we have combine data, we have weights, we have heights, we have, you know, athletic testing for a lot of these guys. So we're going to go through sort of like a winners and losers video for these rookie running backs, but also I'm going to go through and like give some context to these numbers, provide some like athletic and like physical profile comps for these guys to kind of give an idea of like the kind of body types and like movers they are compared to historical prospects. So yeah, I think that's about all the intro we need. Let's get into it. <laughs> First guy I want to talk about is Kevin Harris, my guy Kevin Harris from South Carolina, um, pre-combine, he was my RB2, and he was pretty nice at the combine, he didn't run the 40, I don't know if that was surprising I guess, but just kind of notable, um, I would imagine he'll do that at his pro day later this month, but he came in at 5'10", 221 pounds, um, which is right around what we expected, so he's a big dude, solidly built, and his vertical... 38 and a half inches in the 85th percentile, broad jump 10 and a half feet, 84th percentile, and he put up 21 reps on the bench, which is above average. So explosive, strong, stoutly built guy. Here's what I'm going to do with these comps. I'm going to give you of the top 10 like physical comps for these guys, which takes into account like all the athletic testing data and their heights and weights and the relationship between their heights and weights. I look at pounds per inch just because it's like more intuitive for me to think about than BMI, but it's basically the same thing. Um, you kind of want to be like right around three or above pounds per inch for an NFL running back. And so a guy who's let's say 3.05 pounds per inch at 210 pounds and a guy who's 3.05 pounds per inch at 225 pounds. Yeah, they're different size players, but they're proportionally built similarly. So the physical comps takes into account height, weight, proportional build, and athletic testing numbers. So I'm going to give you, for each of these guys that I'm going through, four of the like best, most successful NFL players of their top 10 comps. So going to keep it positive for all of these guys, whether they were like a winner or loser of the combine, kind of give you best case scenario, like physical comparables for these players. So back to Kevin Harris, four exciting guys in his comps list are Rex Burkhead, James Robinson, Ladanian Tomlinson, and Alexander Madison. Four really solid guys there. Obviously there's quite a range with the 40 times that those guys, Burkhead was like over 4.7, Ladanian Tomlinson ran like a low 4.4. So we we don't know how fast Kevin Harris is yet. I mentioned this in the top 10 pre-combine video, but he was timed really fast back in 2020 on a run um, over, I think it was over 21 miles an hour, but we'll see how fast he is at his pro day. But the average 40 time of his top 10 physical comps, so given his size, given his um, explosiveness numbers, the average 40 time of his top 10 physical comps was 4.59, which at his size would give him a 99.6 speed score, which would be in the 62nd percentile. I'm not really a speed score guy, but it is fairly predictive of NFL success, more or less because it's predictive of draft capital. Like we want big, fast guys, like that's kind of intuitive. But if he runs right around a 4.59, like average for guys his size and his explosiveness level, that would be really nice. Like definitely adequate requisite speed for Kevin Harris there. So he's a winner of the combine. A relative loser of the combine was Tyler Algier. He came into the combine as one of my top five rookie running backs. He was a uh, similar size to Kevin Harris, 5'11", 224 pounds. He wasn't very fast, 4'6", which is, you know, right around what we, we would expect for Kevin Harris. But there was chatter of Algier being like a 4'4 flat guy out of BYU. I don't know where he got that. I don't know if he was just had a bad day at the combine or if probably the you know, the self-reported time was just a little bit inflated. So 4.6 in the 40, that's a 26th percentile number. Um, not good in the vert, only 33 inches. That's 27th percentile. Broad jump, only 10 feet. Below average again, 49th percentile. So he's not incredibly explosive. Not as fast as we would have thought. His, uh, you know, four kind of like most successful physical comps are David Montgomery, CJ Anderson, Cedric Benson, and Jordan Howard. So we've seen guys like with his, you know, kind of build and athletic profile be successful. You, you know, you can obviously do that. He's an NFL level athlete. He didn't completely fall, you know, on his face. He's, you know, still in the realm of possibility that he could be a good NFL running back, but just a little bit disappointing. But that lack of speed and explosiveness does call into question a little bit, like how exactly he was winning on the field. His efficiency in college was largely fueled by like a high breakaway conversion rate, high like yards after the catch per reception numbers, both, you know, above the 70th percentile. And without great speed, are those things, you know, great speed or explosiveness, are those things like duplicable in the NFL? Is he going to be able to like outrun NFL corners in the open field? 
Is he going to be able to, you know, take a swing pass and explode past guys out in the open like that? Calls that into question a little bit, so uh, might have to go take a closer look at Tyler Algier after this combine performance, but I think he was a little bit disappointing. Next guy I want to talk about is Kenneth Walker, and... A little bit of like a mixed bag for him at the Combine. The number one thing that I was looking forward to at the Combine for Kenneth Walker was his weigh-in. I predicted, based on like historical data of um, like weight gain patterns for guys, um, for running back prospects, I predicted Kenneth Walker would be 5'9 and 2 eighths of an inch and 211 pounds, and that's exactly what he was. I just like nailed that one, which was kind of nice, but that's better than kind of what I was scared of, was that he might be like 5'10 or a little bit taller and maybe closer to 205 pounds, which would make him you know, like proportionally tall and skinny, which we don't want to see out of a guy who doesn't catch passes, which Kenneth Walker doesn't really at this point in his career. So him being five foot nine and 211 pounds, that gives him like a solid BMI. He's still a little bit undersized. I think, you know, we know that Um, that's kind of a given, but he wasn't as small and tall as I feared. So solid weigh in for Kenneth Walker. He was very fast, 438 in the 40, 95th percentile, relatively explosive. His 34 inch vert was just a 40th percentile number, but he was over 10 feet in the broad jump, uh, 65th percentile. And his four uh, kind of best athletic physical profile comps, Ty Johnson, Felix Jones, Joe Williams, you know, that dude from the 49ers a couple years ago who just like didn't play after he was solid in college, Joe Williams, and then Ryan Matthews, um, old Eagles running back out of Fresno State. So yeah, a little bit up and down there, like two solid guys in Jones and Matthews, Ty Johnson, Joe Williams, maybe not as good. Kenneth Walker is still relatively small and he doesn't catch passes. And that's not a good thing for his prospects of like seeing heavy work in the NFL. And we don't want to see him be Bilal Powell or you know, Tevin Coleman, like one of these tweener guys. He's still a little bit in that territory. 215 would have been a really nice size for him. I'm kind of wrestling in my head, like, do I want to kind of write a guy off for like a four pound difference um, versus what would be ideal for him? I'm not writing him off. You know, I was kind of basing my evaluation on the assumption that he would be exactly this size. I had him at my RB4 pre-combine. I probably still have him there. Still a great runner but the size concerns relative to also not catching passes still remain for Kenneth Walker. A winner of the combine is Keontae Ingram. He's been a guy that I've been on for a couple years now as like a an under the radar like three down back in this class. I think His rushing efficiency numbers are a little bit concerning. He wasn't super efficient relative to his teammates, but he was 210 at the Senior Bowl, which is really concerning because he's like six feet tall. You don't want to be 210 and six feet tall, but he came into the combine at 221, which was nice to see. He bulked up there and he ran 453 in the 40. That's right at average for NFL running backs. And given his size, that's pretty impressive. And he was relatively explosive, 34 and a half inches in the vert, 47th percentile, 10-2 in the broad, 65th percentile. So we'd like to see that. And he's got some nice comps as well. Buck Allen, Jalen Samuels, CJ Procise, and Cam Akers. So for a guy that's like, you know, not really a top 10 back in this class, as far as like consensus goes, he was probably just outside my personal top 10. To see like NFL contributors like Buck Allen, Jalen Samuels, CJ Procise, I don't think he's like a lead back type like Cam Akers is, but those guys are all at least role players. So, you know, I'm a little bit encouraged by Keontae Ingram's like weigh in and athletic testing. And I think he's sort of like his skill set makes him sort of like a cousin of like the David Montgomery, Kareem Hunt, like Zach Moss family tree of like, he's a little bit faster than them. He doesn't quite break as many tackles as those guys, but from like a size perspective, you know, three down ability, he's sort of like adjacent to them as far as like skill set goes. So I think he could be like a solid, you know, like committee back in the NFL. Um, I liked what I saw from Keontae Ingram. Next guy I want to talk about is Jalen Warren. And he was one of these uh, kind of under the radar guys I talked about a couple weeks ago in a sleeper running back video. I liked him coming out of Oklahoma State. He was a good runner, doesn't catch that many passes. And he was listed at 215 at Oklahoma State. He came into the combine at 5'8", 204, which is, especially given that he doesn't really catch passes, far too small. 5'8", 215 would have been stout. 5'8", 204 is just like satellite back size. He wasn't that fast, 4'5", which is decent, but especially given his size, not that impressive, and he was not explosive. 31 and a half inch vertical, 15th percentile, 42nd percentile broad jump, like less than 10 feet, and he does have like several successful players showing up in his top 10 physical comps, but they're like Devontae Freeman, Ray Rice. He's a lot slower than Ray Rice, but everything else is like right there. James White, Giovanni Bernard, but 
The thing about those guys is they were all capable pass catchers. Ray Rice was not that in college. Um, he didn't look like one back at Rutgers. He obviously proved to be that in the NFL. Jalen Warren has like a lot of ground to make up to A, be on the level of prospect that those guys were, and B, show that he can catch passes at the level of that those guys can. And I'm not optimistic that he will do that. So I'm kind of ready to write Jalen Warren off. He's not that athletic, was much smaller than we anticipated, and he doesn't catch passes. I don't know what role he has in the NFL. Um, a guy who did well for himself is Tyler Goodson. He came in at 5'9", 197, which is probably about what we would have expected, like right around 200 pounds. That's not big, but like he's a satellite back type guy. But he was really fast, 4'4", 2 in the 40, and he was explosive. 36 and a half inch vert, 10 foot 3 in the broad jump, both in the 71st percentile. And some of his physical comps are Denard Robinson, Kenyon Barner, Danny Woodhead, and Naeem Hines. Um, I could see him playing a similar role to some of those guys. I don't know that he's like a Danny Woodhead level guy, but Denard Robinson um, is a decent comp. Naheem Hines would be a good high-end um, kind of projection for him. And especially relative to the other like satellite back types in this class, you know, like Kyron Williams, um, who I'll talk about in a second, Tyler Beatty, Ronnie Rivers, uh, Jerry and Ely, these type of guys. Tyler Goodson kind of separated himself from that group as being either like bigger or if not bigger, like more, like more well-built, like more, uh, like denser. So bigger or denser or more athletic than all of those guys. There's nobody that has like both of those on him. So I think he, you know, kind of in that tier of like satellite backs in this class, I think he kind of like rose to the top for me. I've been on him since probably he was a freshman as an underrated guy. I've felt like he was sort of like arbitrage Kyron Williams in this class. And now, especially given Kyron Williams, who I'm about to talk about, like I would just straight up take Tyler Goodson over Kyron Williams because Kyron Williams is not an NFL level athlete, especially given his size. He came in at 5'9", 194, which is 10 pounds lighter than I would have expected, five pounds lighter than he was listed at at Notre Dame. And he was super slow. Like he's kind of the story of the combine for the running backs. 4'6", 5", in the 40. That's in the 12th percentile. Given his size, that gives him an 8th percentile speed score, which again, I'm not really a speed score guy, but that's, you know, predictive of like draft capital and things like that. So that's not a good look. And he was not explosive. 32 inches in the vert, 9 foot 8 in the broad jump. That gives him a 20th percentile burst score. So not fast, not explosive. His closest, like most successful physical comps are Theo Riddick, Jaquiz Rogers, Justin Forsett, and Taquan Mizell. None of, like all of those guys are both heavier and denser than Williams. Like they're all like smaller dudes who also weren't super fast, weren't super explosive. Even among them, Kyron Williams is too small. And, and like Jaquiz Rogers and Taquan Mazel were more efficient runners in college than than Kyron Williams was. You know, he was getting buzz as like this Austin Eckler, Aaron Jones type like three down weapon. He wasn't efficient in college. He, I think he can still be a decent satellite back, but much more in like a Theo Riddick type role than you know, like a Naheem Hines, like athletic dynamic type projection. He just doesn't have like the movement ability to like give that extra kind of juice to what he's bringing on the field. Karen Williams was in my top 10 pre-combine and given that I didn't like his ability to run the ball anyway, given this athletic profile, given that he's smaller than we thought, like I'm completely out on Kyron Williams. He's not good, frankly. <laughs> like Next guy I want to talk about is Zamir White, who I'm not really in on, but he was nice at the combine. He came in at 6'2", 214, which is a little bit slim for that height, but he was really fast. 4'4", four, four, flat in the 40, 91st percentile. His vert wasn't great in the 33rd percentile, but he was really nice in the broad jump, 10'8", 90th percentile. And, you know, kind of given weight, speed, explosiveness, close comps for him are Joe Williams again, Felix Jones, Travis Etienne, Joseph Adai. I'm um, kind of a wide range of like not successful at all, you know, solid role player, and then like some high end um, RB1 level talents. And the thing about Samir White, as far as like a skill set standpoint goes, is he was not efficient in college really at all. He was really effective in short yardage, but, it, but that's kind of the only place where he was sort of, you know, a positive contributor. He was not a pass catcher. So it's a little weird that he was like super fast and skinny at the combine, given that wasn't a huge big play guy in college, wasn't very efficient, but good in short yardage. I'm not sure exactly, like that's just sort of a strange profile. I'm not really sure what to think about it. He's still not really a guy that I'm in on, but I think he made some money for himself this weekend. So you like to see that. A guy who was a little disappointing was Kennedy Brooks. And I kind of like Kennedy Brooks as a like two down runner. He was really efficient relative to other guys at Oklahoma. Given that he was playing at a program like Oklahoma, he was fairly productive. He also doesn't really catch passes, but you know, taking that for granted, like he's a, he's a good running back. He came in too skinny, 5'11", 209. Like that's what we were scared of for Kenneth Walker. 
and Kennedy Brooks also wasn't that fast, 459, 12th percentile in the vertical, just 31 inches, 10 feet in the broad jump, just below average, 49th percentile. Close physical comps are Bruce Anderson, Jamar Jefferson, Jamal Williams, Wayne Gallman, and I do think he can still be a guy like that. Like, I think he could come in and be like a Wayne Gallman, just like a total jag who, like, gets some work, but yeah. I kind of liked him as sort of like an under the radar, like maybe two down, like committee leader type guy. I no longer see that in his range of outcomes. I think he's much more just sort of like a third running back, like Jag, you know, kind of come in for, you know, maybe 50 carries a season type guy. So a little bit disappointing from Kennedy Brooks. Not disappointing was Rashad White. He was another guy who was a little bit too skinny at the senior bowl. Um, He was only 210 as well, kind of like Keonta Ingram. He came in at six foot 214, which again is relatively tall and skinny for or a running back, but a lot better than 210. Like, we'd rather him be 6'2", 214 than 210. That gives him upper percentile size, and he was fast. 4'4", 8 in the 40, that's in the 69th percentile. His uh, 38-inch vert, 10-foot, 5-inch broad jump, both above the 80th percentile. Fast, explosive, decent size. He is like a Charles Sims clone from, like, a, a physical standpoint, given the testing he did. If I'm not mistaken, Charles Sims was exactly the same size, exactly the same 40, exactly the same jumps. And other guys who are closer, like Marlon Mack, Amon Green, Tony Pollard. He's got some really, really nice comps. I think this is like a best case scenario combine for Rashad White. You know, as far as like realistic outcomes go, you know, it would have been nice to see him be 220, but I don't think that was realistic. So given that he was bigger than he was at the Senior Bowl and like legitimized his on-field efficiency with explosive athleticism, perfect for Rashad White. Really like that. Disappointing, Isaiah Spiller. Obviously, if you've seen any of my other videos, like, you know, I'm not really an Isaiah Spiller guy. He's got decent size, um, six foot, 217, really solid there. Didn't run the 40, which isn't a great sign, but he did jump and he was not good there. 30 inches in the vert, which is seventh percentile. Uh, nine foot one in the broad jump, which is 22nd percentile. And those two combined to give him a seventh percentile burst score, which is the worst in the class and would be 17th worst among all running backs drafted since 2007. So as far as explosiveness goes, he's bottom 20 in the last 15 years among NFL running backs. The most successful comps for him from a physical standpoint are Dalvin Cook. I don't think Spiller is going to be as fast as Dalvin Cook. He might be at his, at his pro day, given that, you know, who the fuck knows what they're doing with the stopwatches at the pro day. But Dalvin Cook, um, and then the other guys are Mike Gillisley, Raquel Armstead, Tim Hightower. This is gonna, I don't know, this sounds probably hot takey and a little like piling on. I don't hate the Mike Gillisley comp for Isaiah Spiller. You know, decently sized guys, kind of just like utility backup running back types. I think Isaiah Spiller will have better draft capital than that, but I'm not sure that he's a better running back in a vacuum than like a Raquel Armstead type. So, you know, not bad there. There was this report coming out of the uh, post combine, I think from Isaiah Spiller's agent, that he participated in like on field work workouts and the jump drills despite like nursing some sort of hamstring injury which okay that would explain like why he wasn't very explosive but a I don't know that a lot of people expected him to be super athletic anyway and b he announced the day before the combine that he wasn't going to run the 40 and given that he was hurt and knew that prior to testing in the jumps and the on-field workouts didn't run the 40 jumped and participated in workouts despite being hurt and now is going to go run in his combine like that doesn't make any sense to me if you knew you were hurt and you opted out of the 40 why wouldn't you opt out of everything else i'm not saying that this is a lie it doesn't seem to completely make sense to me i don't know what's actually going on with isaiah spiller's like health um with his testing all I know is he came in, was not impressive at all from an explosiveness standpoint, opted out of the 40 for whatever reason, is now saying that he was hurt and is going to do things at his pro day. We shall see. Brees Hall, obviously the big winner of the combine, came in right around the same size as Isaiah Spiller, a little bit shorter, uh, 5'11", 217, 4'3", 9 in the 40, 93rd percentile, incredibly explosive, 40-inch vert, 92nd percentile, 10 and a half feet in the broad jump, 84th percentile. Those two give him a 94th percentile burst score, which is the number one in the class and where Isaiah Spiller is bottom 20 since 2007. That would make Brees Hall top 25 since 2007. So fairly big dude, above average size, incredible explosiveness, very fast. Um, his closest comps um, from like, you know, successful guys, Adrian Peterson, Ladanian Tomlinson, Joseph Adai, and Edgerin James. Edgerin James did not jump at the combine, but given size and speed, he's right there. Um, Brees Hall and Edgerin James are pretty comparable. You know, I've talked about this a couple times. I am not super excited about like the shape of Brees Hall's rushing efficiency profile. It seems to me like a lot 
lot of his efficiency was like fueled by these long runs and he wasn't super consistent relative to the other guys at Iowa State. I still think that's a concern. That might be a little bit of a nitpick. I think it's a legitimate worry. But other than that, he's a very complete prospect. Like production, overall efficiency, receiving, size. He just has it all. He would have been my RB1 last year. He's my RB1 this year. Looking forward to next year. If he came out that year, he'd be my RB1. So I'm a little worried about the rushing efficiency, but from like bird's eye view, he is a full package prospect. So Brees Hall, the big winner of the 2022 running back class at the Combine. And that'll about wrap it up. This next week, uh, I think I'm going to be doing sort of like an AMA, I guess, about these rookie running backs, about running backs in general, about current NFL running backs, about my process, like whatever. Um, I've gotten quite a few questions like in the YouTube comments on these videos. On Twitter, I get questions pretty regularly. So I figured I'd take a video to just address a lot of those. So if you have questions about like the content of this video, about, I don't know, whatever's been on your mind, like related to what I'm doing with running backs here, like drop it in the comments, catch me on Twitter, um, hit me up there, DM me, whatever. And I'll like find some of those, go back on the older videos, catch some uh, questions from there and put together just kind of like a Q&A session in my next video. So have a good one. Thanks for checking out the video. Hit that like and subscribe and peace.